So we have a special treat for you. We are gonna showcase to you today a podcast that I shot with one of my favorite people on the planet, Mr. David Greenspan, the host of the Mindshare 101 podcast. I rewatched this one recently and I just had to share it on our platform because we dig into the goods Go into all things video, content creation, social selling, how to get in and actually learn Facebook ads and adapt in the today's marketplace. And you need to know this stuff. If you are out there doing business, B2B, B2C, doesn't really matter. You need to be a ninja and a black belt at this stuff. So even if you're hiring somebody else to do it for you, you're not getting hosed on the quotes and understand the dynamics and how to get the messaging across. A lot of times people get confused and they think, oh, I just want to hire somebody to do something for me, not understanding the medium. And this guy is one of the best I've ever met at pulling information out and solving that problem. So it's from the lens of a real estate agent, but tons of value in this episode. Thank you so much, David, for having us on and enjoy. So I'm really happy we connected. Um, I'm glad you reached out to set this up because I think we can jam on some stuff. I'm excited to sharpen my sword. And if there's any value that I can bring you or your audience, then let's get after it, man. 100%, bro. And you, 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 like, you just walked right into that one because like, I'm going, okay, I invited you on the show for like uh, so many reasons, like no particular order here, but I'd say, uh, like me, you are a founding member of the Industry Syndicate. Um, and just like Justin just said, everybody's got to go check this thing out. Um, this started off sort of what, like 12 or 13 of us. We yeah. have expanded really, really quickly. This thing is literally North America wide. Like it went viral very quick. Uh, we're going worldwide. I mean, I've already had guys from Australia on the show. We've told them about the syndicate. Um, so this is just badass, but that was one of the reasons. Another reason was about that. Yeah, you're Canadian, eh? Uh-huh. That, that, that'd be good. Um, beyond that, you do a ton of video just like I do, and I want I want to, you know my audience and everybody watching this thing to understand what you're up to and, and get on that and follow Justin. Make sure you're checking him out because this stuff I, I love watching it, dude. Like you got wicked energy. Um, it's a great message. It's put together well. Um, and then beyond it all, and I didn't ask you this, but I'm going to make a serious assumption here. You are a Leafs fan, right? Not at all. Born and raised in Montreal. I saw the jersey hanging on the wall and I didn't say anything. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Mindshare podcast. This is the quickest edition I've ever done. (laughs) No, I know it's Leafs Nation, man. Guy living in Ontario being a Habs fan. London's a funny place. Like, we end up having quite a few French people and Habs fans here. So maybe that's why I ended up here. But. Born and raised, going to the old forum in Montreal. I actually miss it. They have a fancy new building now, but I still remember the gritty, gritty feel of there. And then where I'm located, we're actually closer to Michigan, right? So like when I go see the original six, I always go to Detroit. But if it's the Leafs playing Detroit, I'll go down there. Any of the original six teams I love. So, you know, I, I get your struggle and hey. At least we're both Canadian, right? Uh, right. Listen, dude, I will say this, okay? And as much as I am a Leafs fan, so there's just, you know, that born and raised thing of going like, I just don't like the Habs because I'm a Leafs fan, period. 100%. Um, I get it. But I will say that a couple of years ago, I was invited by a buddy of mine to go see a Habs game in Montreal. And we sat three rows from the ice. Um, and, you know, not knocking anybody with colored hair or anybody that likes camouflage because I like camouflage. I don't necessarily color my hair. But front row was like somebody with like colored hair, just like, you know, whatever, pink or something. And and the guy was wearing like a a camouflage hoodie. Now, why do I bring that up? It's no knock on anybody, but come to Toronto and everybody is, well, dressed a lot more like yourself. They're not necessarily there for hockey. They're there for business. And it's very, very quiet. So the nice thing that happened with the Bell, like with the forum in Montreal was they were loud. They were passionate, man. Like they were, they were just like, they were animals. It was, it was a wicked wicked experience quite frankly the acc i mean scotia bank arena whatever you want to call it these days here in toronto um every time i go there i get the chills because i'm like i'm at the home of my leafs yeah but buddy it did not compare to what montreal like it was just it was a wicked wicked atmosphere in montreal so i will give them credit where credit is due kudos for that man i appreciate you doing that it's very clear cut i think we live in a global village and i mean going to different places and traveling and you and i both probably jam on that because we know people in different markets with the industry syndicate. I know they're talking about doing an event in June. There's a lot of stuff where we go to other markets and other cities and, you know, we do live in a global village and we can kind of take the best from every city and see that, right? Like 
that that hustle that exists in Toronto and you know just how mate like it's the New York of Canada when you look at it right yeah. like I was just in New York in December with Sirhan that whole crew and I really thought I'm like man it, it does have the same glimmers of, of what Toronto is Montreal's pure chaos right like I tell people I'm like drive in Toronto and drive in Montreal Montreal there's no road signs you walk into a restaurant, their lang- the menu might be in a language you can read or might not. The guy might serve you right away or he might come out of the back because he's the cook. Like, you never know what's going to happen. So you do get that flavor, especially the, what you felt when you were there. It's funny how you compare Toronto and Montreal. And I used to do that. And I used to think before I ever went to, uh, pardon me, Toronto, New York, and before I ever went to New York, I thought I was from a big city. Like, I th- you know, I thought Toronto was big. Um, and I mean, lo and behold, in comparison to like any city here in Canada, it's massive. But yeah. I went to New York and I thought, oh my God, man, everything's up, you know, like everything's so tall and you're looking around. I thought from a little farm town up in Canada, eh? <laughs> yeah. well, think, so think about that. There was a podcast I was listening to um, and they were talking about how the glimmers of what's happening in Toronto right now are very similar to what happened in New York back in the 50s. So New York went through a time when they were looking at rezoning the different neighborhoods and the infill intensification. They almost lost the fight. So in New York, the Soho district, like a lot of the districts that people look at now as like the Meatpackers district, the ones that you yeah. want to go to yeah. were owned by people that had single family residential. And they said, no, we don't want anybody to build. So they fought New York won. Now they have all the boroughs and the flavor and it's all tied in really nicely. Toronto's going through something similar where their zoning is ancient. So they're going through a time right now where they have to determine where are we going to go with this? What are we going to allow? What are we not going to allow? And that's what they were talking about. They're like, you know, Toronto's in a unique position where it could go down the path of a New York City where you'll have cities within cities and boroughs and different areas you can go to. And I think it's going to go that direction. But we're just, you know, 30, 40 years behind where New York actually went. So which is kind of a cool place to be, especially that you live there, right? Oh, dude, it's it's listen, I love the city. Like, I'll tell you, I've tra- I travel like crazy. I go to so many different places, go through so many different airports. Um, and the cool thing about Toronto, like, I mean, it's diverse. You got so many different walks of people who are walking through this place. Um, there's so much to see. There's so much to do. You know, traffic sucks. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, just to what you just said, like, even in terms of like, you know, sort of the boroughs and kind of like taking those cities within a city. Like we're definitely getting there. You know what yeah. I mean? We're, we're, we're definitely, it's growing. I mean, I, you know, from where I live to watch how many buildings and condos and like high rises have gone up since I've, I've been on this earth kind of living in the same areas for most of my life. Yeah. It's wild, right? Like it's crazy to see both of that. Maybe nice if somebody think about the infrastructure, the roads to understand like, you know, it's fine. You know, you put in the power, you put in the sewers and you put in everything else, but what about the roads? You know, how do people get around places? Anyways. It's going to change. And I mean, you should talk to jazz from the industry syndicate because he's probably building and selling most of those buildings. I know Dude, we were just talking this morning. It's funny you bring him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's like a brother to me, man. Like I've known him for, it's gotta be going on five years now. Oh, yeah? And same thing, right? Like it was almost like the industry syndicate thing, but we just, we would see each other a couple times a year. And like, I try and call him in the morning and he's in the GTA and I'll be like, Hey, what are you looking at right now? And he'll be like traffic. And I'll be, he's like, what are you looking at? I'm like a cow. Cause I'm driving in from my, <laughs> right? So, that's jokes but so listen my goal for this podcast um as usual is to leave listeners walking away with little nuggets that they can use to build mindshare um so sort of jumping into some of the meat and potatoes like i mean there's a lot of wicked things that i see coming from you in terms of you know uh beyond even your real estate business which i know you've really crushed it there um but you know your podcast and the videos you're doing like i mentioned off the top you're like just awesome stuff and so i wanted to get into I guess, based on knowing what it takes to create a ton of content and then be able to promote that content, get it out there and really kind of take that macro idea, break it down to micro, Um, looking at the things you do. And I've seen you like with the Insta videos, kind of like showing the camera and everything else. I'm going, okay, Uh doing a lot of work behind that stuff. Right. So kind of like going right off the top, what is a like a typical day in the life of you look like like what are you typically up to where's the focus each day like i mean again we see you know this is the beauty of instagram stories and facebook stories and whatever like you know working out and then doing business and having a meeting and ripping a podcast and like and then and then and then you get people go oh but i'm so busy oh i'm too busy like you're like yeah okay that's a bullshit excuse you're not managing time accordingly and that's all i'm going to say about that a hundred percent right and i mean so, so let's start actually the night before. So I'll give people the entire 
platform, secret sauce, and I do it anyways, right? Any, I get my competitors that call me or watch our videos and they'll ask me and I'll tell them exactly how I go about doing things because I do really, truly believe we are now in a time where you need to be, you need to be sharing, collaborating because it's all going to come back. Home, right? Like if you think you've got the secret sauce, I hate to break it to you within a month, there's going to be a change to that sauce and you need to go out and learn and do what we're doing right now and go find people that are doing it better than you are humble yourself and you know realize that your ego shouldn't be as big as it is because there's no new ideas right we've all taken things repurposed it from other people we all have different flavors and we have different combinations of those ingredients for our sauce so i don't mind sharing it because what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you and the agents out there i hate to break it to you my clients aren't going to work with you and typically well, I don't know. Your clients may or may not work with our firm. Maybe you'll come work with us. Who knows? <laughs> More often than not, if you're doing good, honest business, your clients are going to stick with you too, right? So if I can help you build your business and then all of a sudden you have a listing and I have a client, well, guess what? Our deal is going to go a lot smoother because we already have a good relationship and maybe I gave you some value. So maybe my buyer benefits on the back end. Right. And, and, and listen, that for everybody listening, I mean, that's what you call reciprocity, right? Um, I'm big on that stuff. I've said that to so many people, but I totally believe in karma. I totally believe in reciprocity, you know, give to the world and somehow the world gives back, but you got to be genuine. You know, you got to really be genuine about it. Like it can't be, you know, okay, what's this going to do for me in, in, in my back pocket? Like if you're thinking that way, again, somehow the world, the universe, it knows that stuff, you know, you got to be real about it. And, and to be frank with you too, right? Like my, the founding principle of our brokerage, and I appreciate you kicking that out in the beginning is doing nothing, you know, through selfless ambition, but putting others first. I'm a man of faith. So I believe the big man upstairs is the one that every time I pour into, he's kind of just patting me on the head and being like, see, I know that was the hard decision to make. Yeah. Well, you made the right decision. So this is how things are going to unfold. And I tell people all the time, just think about this, right? If you're in traffic and you know, you cut somebody off by accident, right? And then they pull up and they flip you the bird. You go into red mode and then you get angry. You say something to them. Your day is ruined. Like you think about that for the rest of the day. You go to the George Costanza. I should have said this and I should have said that. <laughs> but if you extend a little bit of grace and reciprocity and own it and say, you know what, man, I'm sorry. That was my fault. You don't think about it again. So this is kind of the same concept in, you know, a business setting where, you have to put others first, right? You have to really yeah. give more than you're taking and you got to hold yourself accountable. And exactly what you said, it's easy to say, it's really hard to put into practice when there's money on the table and you got to make decisions that are right for the people that you're working with or giving value, not expecting anything. Maybe you give value to somebody and they turn around and try to stab you in the back. That's life. Be the bigger yeah. person, walk away and your reputation builds over time, yeah. and you end up with a group of people like we've happened to meet, right? So going back, because I get off topic sometimes, I, <laughs> let, let's look at my day, right? So right. the night before, mind sweep. So everything that I did that day, I put it on a piece of paper. I have a couple apps and stuff that I use to organize. I try and systemize it to one app, and then I use one app daily. So I live by my calendar. Anything critical goes in my calendar the next day. I time block my entire schedule from when I'm gonna post my social stuff. I have an entire content calendar for the year, broke it down quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. So it's literally a calendar that's on my Google calendar that's color-coded purple. I turn it off most of the time, but if I need a reminder, I turn it on. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that. Because I used it to develop a habit over a couple years of knowing, but I know at 7 a.m. what I'm posting on Instagram. Right. Now I have to curate the content and that's actively thinking about it in my day-to-day but it's so automated for me now that like I'll be at a property inspection. I'll see something that people need to know about. I'll snap a photo or shoot a video, just keep it in my database. And then when it's time to post, I've got it there. I know where I'm going to repurpose it. So the night before everything's time blocked, I wake up in the morning. It's my routine. The first thing I do is I take some time. I pray, you know, some people do different things, whatever, you know, I go through some scripture, I journal right after that. And I just write down what I learned. And this is, things people can take to anything, right? If you're learning something, take notes. Yeah. Act of writing it down will actually anchor it. And then it gives me a purpose for the day. And I think, how can I take what I learned today and put that into practice and, and you know, help other people in my community? So that goes into putting me in that mindset of put, putting others first. Then I bang a workout. That's just, I hold myself accountable. I have to do it. And then I spend time with my wife and my daughter, you know, pour into them. But 
my day is already scheduled. So I am not responding to the whirlwind, as I like to call it. It's already time blocked. I know what I'm doing. I know what my priorities are. That's done. My daughter's off to school. My wife runs the brokerage with me. Maybe she's in her whirlwind. I bang out 30 minutes of email. One tip I'll give people, because everybody deals with the email whirlwind, time block it three times a day. Don't check it throughout the day unless you have something critical coming because you'll spend your whole day hitting your phone, hitting your phone, hitting your phone. Those micro interruptions will slow you down. Time block, try to get to inbox zero, 30 minutes of focused email. Incredible. You can get through a lot. Oh yeah. Touch it once. If it's going to take longer than five minutes, file it on a to-do list and then get it out of your inbox. If there's a, well, so it, it, it's like not being a slave to other people's messages and that could be dms that could be emails whatever it is you've got a time i love what you're saying there i mean i i operate pretty much exactly the same way you you have to right because the technology is designed to get your attention so either the technology is in control with you or you're in control of the technology and i was the worst because real estate agents back when i started my career it's all shiny object syndrome yeah. it's the next lead right you may have you know 20 million dollars worth of business sitting in your pocket but you're like, oh, somebody just responded to a, an ad that I put out. And if you don't have a system in place for that, you're not getting to it in time. So we put systems in place so that, you know, if I'm only checking email three times a day, we're not missing anything. Any leads that come in go into our right. CRM, they get automatically assigned. Like we respond faster than anybody, but I also have more freedom than anybody because of the fact that we're structured. So it, it's kind of counterintuitive, but the discipline equals freedom, like Jocko Willing likes to say, right? So from a tactile standpoint, I bang up my emails. After I'm done that, I'm already on my way into the office and I'm calling people. So I'm literally calling my team members. I'm, I'm doing, you know, mind sweeps with them. What are we working on? You know, use the analogy of ping pong balls and what you just said. You're responding to people, right? Yeah. All these ping pong balls are coming at you. Well, when you sit down with focus time, you're hitting the ping balls back, right? You're saying, okay, you're interested in this property. This is what you need to do to move forward. You put the ball in their hands. Now you have a time block from, let's say, 9 a.m. till noon, where maybe you're waiting for the ball to come back. So that's when I'm sitting down and I'm calling Jamie, who's my commercial guy, he crushes it. And I'll be like, yeah, man, we're working on this file, this file, this file. You know, what blocks do you have in front of you? Like, what's slowing this file down from moving forward? Or what, what can we do different? He'll give me the rundown. I have a different perspective. So I'd be like, oh, well, I know so-and-so. Let's get it done. So I'll actually jump in, clear the laneway. He'll jump on the file. He'll take the ball, take it to the end zone. Might talk to another one of my guys. He's got a listing coming up. I call my admin. I'm like, send me the copy for that. I'll put it out on our platform. I do that. All of a sudden, one of my other agents who sees it or another agent in the community who follows us turns around and says, oh, you know what? Call me. I have a buyer for that. So it's all, it's all planned to repurpose itself. So like, that was something I struggled with a little bit where you can spend too much time hiding behind email and video and social. Yeah. Oh You're yeah. Not actually doing anything or there's no end game. The one thing that I'm excited about that you gave me this opportunity is, you know, if you're just somebody out in the field, you may look at everything I do on social and be like, man, he put out, you know, X amount of videos and he's on social all the time. He's doing this. Like it, how much real estate is he selling? And I still skew like 65 to 85% real estate content that we put out there and we're insanely active. It's, easy to get that misconception if you don't understand the structure behind it because yeah. the time blocks and everything else, like it's already done. Like my clover, I'll use prime daily as an example, yeah. right? So my daily videos, I've had people call me and be like, man, that must take so much time. I'm like, it's seven minutes start. Yeah. The thing, right. Like I've been doing it and it's structured and my workflow is structured. It takes less time for me to do that than, you to sit down and go scroll through your Facebook and go down a wormhole for an hour. I can bang out six videos in that time. Right. But a lot of it, it was a learning curve and going through that fire to get to the point where it was structured. Right. So like another part of the structure that's key, and I'm just going to go and kind of go long yeah, yeah. for you here is I'm making the calls. I'm in the office. I meet with the team. I've got appointments throughout the day. Right. So I'll bang out our appointments. If I can, I'll always try and throw something fun in the day. Um, so before this meeting, I was at Adrenaline. I was doing jujitsu with a bunch of friends of mine. Half of them were my, were my clients. Like that just happened how that went. But, you know, we were talking about some marketing stuff. There's a guy there that I do some work with who's an awesome dude. And we were, we were talking like, I'm doing something fun. I'm, I'm doing jujitsu for an hour, but 
I'm actually accomplishing a ton for work and I'm just multi-purposing my time and making sure that it all goes back to what my core beliefs are, right? So then I finish that, I sit down, I rip off a podcast with you. As soon as we're done this, grab a bite to eat. I've got an appointment at 2.15. We're going to go sign a listing for a new commercial space that we're going to lease. I've got two, actually, two residential properties that are going to be hitting the market. We have a 91 91 new home project that we're working on over the next three years that we're launching. So there's, I think, four listings coming up from that. I have a showing with a buyer tonight, but I have a time block to get back to anybody that I need to get back to within that kind of 12-hour time frame respond to any emails, keep any balls in play. I got to negotiate an amendment reduction um, for a triplex that we have under contract. We do the inspection, some electrical issues and stuff like that. My admins already got the amendment ready for us. The buyers are just reviewing it, make sure they're good with it. Cool. Negotiate that. That's all time block. So I know once we're done this call, take 30 minutes to negotiate that with me, put the ball back in place. So like, you know, if your audience is watching this and it sounds like a lot, it's not as long as each minute is focused effort and you're not getting distracted by the whirlwind and responding to people. Right. And then this is kind of long tail, but get to the end of the day. Say I I typically will try to have dinner with my wife and daughter every night. You know, I I at least try and take an hour and just spend that time with them because that's important to me. Heads down. Once we're done that, I do have a time block where, like I said, I start the night before. I'm mind sweeping. I'm going over everything during the day. Sometimes there's some balls that I can keep in play or do some work. Sometimes I'll stay up late and get excited about something or learning or go down at like on Facebook ads is something that I do a lot of. So, you know, we're going through a blueprint certification course right now. I don't mind spending time on things I enjoy, but I'm not miserable when I'm doing it. So it's not like, for me, it's almost like I maybe used to play video games when I was younger. Now I'm learning Facebook ads. Because- Absolutely, dude. Well, here, I mean, to say, so, so, I mean, I love what you had to say about time blocking. I think it's massive. Um, I'm telling people all the time as well. I mean, again, most people know this because I rant about it, but social media's got to be a line item in your calendar, right? It's, it goes back to the, the email, the DM, the text message, the social media, the notifications, like everything that's coming through, you know, these things on a regular basis, they're, they, they are a time sucker, right? Yes. And you've got to know if you want to get to that next level, if you really want to time block accordingly, you've got to know when to delegate. You've got to know when to say no. You've got to know when you've got to block your time, but you've got to be dedicated. Um, you know, that excuse of, you know, I'm sorry I'm late, Right. Uh, like bullshit. You know what I mean? Like you, you're late because you didn't manage your time accordingly. Like I get the things come up. I understand that, but you can't use that again next time. Right. No. So it's like, what are you doing to really block it? And, and I mean, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody recently and she was saying to me that like, she really wants to get on the Instagram, but you know, she just doesn't have time. And I'm like, do you know how stupid freaking easy it is to post something on Instagram? Like, what do you mean you don't have time? Crazy. Oh, I'm so busy. I got this coming. I got that coming. I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, you start to go through like what you just mentioned of what your day looks like. And I know what my day looks like. Like I got two kids at home. My son plays an enormous amount of hockey. So I'm driving around like an animal to hockey rinks and I'm spending a lot of time in there. And a lot of the times in there, you can't even get cell reception. Like you can't get anything. Right. Oh, so you, I didn't think yeah, man. So like it, and it's little things. Like if you wanted to sit there while he's on the ice, and, you know, go ahead and answer some emails. You might have a tough time doing that. So again, Blocking that time is huge. And I know for myself, and I mean, this is, this is not my line, but you want to make above average money, you need to work above average hours. Yeah. Um, and so if I'm going to take my three, four hours in the middle of the day or like at the end of an afternoon to go and do the hockey ring thing, that time has to be made up later on. And so again, everything's got dedication to it where I will put in his hockey. And it's not just the hour that he's on the ice. It's yeah. the half an hour it takes me to go get him. It's the hour ahead of time he's got to be at the rink, let's say, for a game. It's the hour he's on the ice. The half hour it's going to take him to get out undressed. Half an hour to get out of the rink and back home. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's got to be there in order to get it all done. Mm -hmm. So you talk about video, you know, coming up with content. Like, it takes you seven minutes. I mean, I love that because I know for myself as well. Like, I don't do my Mind Show 101 rants daily the way you do those. But I do, you know, the 60-second rip. I release them once a week. Um, I go live every day, though, in my private members group. And so it takes a lot of content. So that whole mind sweep that you do, I love the way you say that. I mean, for me, it's it's, – a lot of it is sort of that admin at the end where I, that's my to do item in my calendar. So that's a, that's a, that's a, an item that carries forward every day. Cause if there's certain okay. hanging, they also have to get done. 
you know, it lets me know where I'm going to be tackling later on at night when the kids go down to bed. Cause yes, family is absolutely crucial. I mean, you've got the kids at home, you've got the wife at home or, or, or the spouse is going to be another, whatever. Yeah. That's why we do this stuff. I mean, that's why I do it. You know, I, I enjoy what we're doing right now, but quite frankly, I enjoy hanging with my kids. That's like the best thing in the world. I want to maximize my time with them at the same time as build my brand. Right. You know, so, it all comes in tandem, right? So think about this. This is another little, little gold thing that I, I heard. It was actually my pastor that told me this. And he's like, you know, now that you're getting married, and he's a very close friend of mine. Like I've traveled with him and an cool. amazing man. So picture you've got, you know, five or six cups in your life, whatever that is to you, right? So one cup is Justin, my own personal satisfaction. The next cup is my relationship with my wife, me as a dad, me from a business perspective. It's like, you've only got, you know, a gallon jug of water. He's like, you can pour it all into Justin's cup and then all the other ones are empty. He's like, or you can pour a little bit into Justin's. You could pour it more into you and Shannon. You could pour more into faith and pour more into your work. But he's like, keep in mind, you got to keep some type of a balance, but you'll go through seasons where, you know, I'll tell my wife, like, we just got back from a vacation. The team crushed it while I was gone. I worked while I was away. We have systems in place to deal with that. So I could leave. Yep. Nothing gets dropped. We did more business actually, but <laughs> you know, I can tell her this week, Hey Shan, you know what? I'm going to be working late tonight. Like my work cup is going to be full this week because I'm farming for the next 60 to 90 days. And she's cool with that because I, that's important too, right? For spouses to feel valued, to feel communicated with. We have a rule here where you don't book anything after 6 PM without telling your significant other first, which Sirhan gave me that. And he said, yeah. 90% of the time, they're never going to say no. But the time where there's something important that they need, they're going to say, you know what? Well, we, I need you. And you tell your client that your client's not going to care. Like they're going to, they're usually going to say, well, you know, is there somebody else or can we just do it earlier? And then you figure it out. Right. But yep. just that over communication is very important, but then deciding where you want each cup. So now I'm going into spring season. I've got some plans for taking our game to the next level. Right. My work cup is going to be here. But I'm going to be conscious that maybe I have to sacrifice some me time. Maybe, you know, we're going to sacrifice a date night because Shannon needs a little bit of her time. Or I'm going to take a day off and then spend some time with her and Faith. Whatever that looks like. Yeah. Be cognizant that you're not going to, you're never going to be able to fill every single cup. But you got to be aware of where you're at. Are you at a, you know, five out of 10 in this, a seven out of 10 in this, a two out of 10 in this, and adjust accordingly, right? You know what, man? I, and I love the way uh, I, lo I love the way you, you, you frame that whole thing. I mean, one of the things, and then you, uh, a few minutes ago, you said something about you know, um, sort of that that annual, monthly, weekly, daily type thing. And I mean, again, the way I spin that same thing is you know, looking at those goals and going, where do I want to be in five, ten, twenty years from now? Right? Yeah. What do I want life to look like? Well, now it's a matter. And this is one of the biggest things I think people really um, fumble through is. You know, again, back to this idea of social and online and everything else that we've got access to, there's these perceptions out there that are completely fake or perceptions that people have of something that ain't real. And then they go, oh my God, I got to be there. I got to get there and I'm not there. Oh my God, this sucks, whatever, whatever. And people start to get mentally down. And I think that um, here, going back to the time block, as well as what I'm trying to say here about the goals, number one, when you time block that social media, um, and I'm reading a book right now, uh, actually, it was recommended by uh, Anthony Brown, who was on my show the other day. Okay, um, awesome. Own the life, own the day. What's it, something like that. Own, own your day, own your life. I'll, I'll figure it out right now. Um, own the day, anyways, Aubrey Marcus's book? Yeah, own yeah, the yeah. day, own your life. So I'm in the middle of that on vacation. Okay, right? And, and I mean, he said something of like the way you wake up in the morning. And I mean, I've, I've really been conscious of this for, for the past little while now, but I mean, again, he's reframing that almost for you as well. Yeah. But it's like hydrate yourself, you know, get some vitamin D in you, you know, start your day that way. Yeah. Don't start your day looking at the fake shit that's out there from people. Cause that's going to really set you off. And like you said, that's like the guy driving in the car, flip the bird, whatever your, your day's done. Yeah. Right. So this comes back now where I was going with this was the goals and everything else was, you know, what does that lifetime kind of look like? And we, it's going to move and shake and change and adjust and everything else. But what does the lifetime look like? How do I now break that down to an annual goal? Where do I want to be at the end of 365 days? Understanding that what I want in life, very unrealistic to believe it's going to happen in the next 365 days, but I can definitely take myself closer. Right. And so breaking down the annual to a monthly, what does this month's goals look like? 
then breaking that down to weekly. And now every single day, there's a plan for what's going on tomorrow. Yeah. Every single Sunday, there's a plan for what's going on all week. And now all of that is predicated off of what does the monthly look like, which is off of the, you know, the annual, which is off the lifetime. And now, you know, as long as you're hitting those bogeys, you're moving closer. And then it comes back to the calendar, the color code, like you said, with the purple and turning things on and off. And I do that with my call list because my call list can be like stupidly long, yeah. bog down my calendar, be completely overwhelming. You know, it sort of causes that anxiety of like, oh my God, I got so much to do. Or put a line item in the calendar for call time, block the time, and then turn that view on so I know what I got to do. Right? Oh. And it's, unreal, it's unreal, right? Like, so Ryan Serhan's book actually covers yeah. that. And I took a couple, like, again, I'm you can take some things from different areas and combine them, right? So like, totally. I've got the time block and I took his FKD, right? His FKD principle is find, keep and do. Yep. So finding business is going out and finding business. Keeping is keeping this whole thing running. Yeah. Doing is actually tasks that you have to do, right. right? And you need to have a balance of those things. And like to, to serve my clients in the highest capacity, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of what I'm doing community building wise is because I recognize that going out and shooting an hour long podcast with somebody local is going to increase the exposure of their property because now that person's associated with me. They know thousands of people, you know, they get shared through different platforms. So all of a sudden they have a context to me. So when I list a property near them that they know somebody that wants to buy, there's a level of trust there. We have an established relationship where the negotiations can go a lot smoother and maybe I save them tens of thousands of dollars or make them a whole pile more money. You know, if I'm doing it with the right intent, where I'm not looking at somebody that is, you know, just dollar signs. Like we shot one yesterday, right. YOU Cafe, which is Youth Opportunities Unlimited. I had some struggles in my past where I could have gone one way or another. And, you know, they are amazing. They work with kids that are struggling with things that you have no idea. Like the amount of human trafficking that goes on in the city, nobody has any idea, right? And right. everybody's got its problems, addiction, homelessness, and everything else. So they give these kids a platform, come in. They give them a job. So they have a cafe that the food is probably some of the best quality I've ever seen. They get trained by the best quality chefs in the city. And these got, these kids can go in, learn, and then now they're employable. So before where they had no light at the end of the tunnel, they now have a skill set. And like some of the chefs said that some of these kids are some of the most naturally talented people they've ever met. They end up going to work for somebody. There was one story of a girl who had a baby. I think she was like 14 or 15 was taking, was dropping her kid off at daycare, was spending two hours taking the bus to get to YOU to go through their program. And, you know, people on the bus were ripping on her. This will come out in the podcast saying, oh, you know what? Kids having kids, that's so bad. And almost stopped her from getting to the end goal. She graduated from their program. She went to Western. She now has her own apartment. She has a phenomenal job. You wouldn't even know this girl was ever homeless. Wow. You know, now it goes back to YOU and shows other kids that, hey, like I'm a case study it works. You're not stuck in this echo chamber for the rest of your life. So like a telling that story was absolutely amazing. And just, you know, pouring some resources sure. in because now like think about that long tail. And I didn't realize it till I left. I'm like, now people that are, you know, maybe in the GTA and thinking about moving to a different city, maybe we're on the radar. Cause they're like, that's amazing that the community and the business associations are all so tied in together that, you know, London's not somewhere I thought about maybe I'll Google. And then they Google and all of a sudden my property comes up and then they buy it. Like you got to realize that with intent, if you're working for a purpose, it's all going to come back to you. Yeah. And, you know, whether there's a direct correlation there, I don't really care. I've had fun yeah. doing it, but I also know that it lifts our level of service to our clients, our exposure. And just our business is proof of that because year on year, the growth that we've had, the people sure. that are following us that watch the shows, I didn't even realize watch them. They'll be like, oh yeah, we watch it. I know, right? <laughs> that's, that's so cool. You're like, wait a second, I've never seen a like and a comment on it. <laughs> exactly what I was gonna say. And I'm like, that's the human aspect, right? When you people and you're like, okay, show me a little bit of love, but you gotta keep in mind that- so paper for once in a while, like share it or something. <laughs> Nobody you don't want to. That, that's the cool thing. And like, there's, there's the thing that most people need to re really recognize, especially when putting out content. Um, and as you just mentioned, right, it's, it's, you know, you're getting out there with the community and you're talking about a story that 
you know, if you want to say surface level has nothing to do with what you do for a living yet, if you yeah. really dig into it, I mean, I can see a million things that it has to do with what you do for a living. And now you're really becoming, you know, what we'll call a community expert. You're becoming somebody who's in the know, somebody who people call and go, you know, um, and I mean, I joke about this one a lot, but like, where's the best place to get a hamburger, you know, around the, you. And when people are thinking about you for that type of stuff, it's because they start to look at you as somebody who understands what is going on around you. And, and that's really one aspect of kind of, I guess what I'm sort of dissecting from what you just shared. But, you know, even when we look at that with, um, with our audience that we're always talking to, so many people want to get into this type of thing where they want to, you know, they want to up that social media game. They want to do more. And we tell people it's all about providing value. It's all about, you know, giving, giving and doing and everything else. And then there's, you know, the excuse of time, which we just obviously acknowledged how to structure that. But even when we get into video, let me, let me go down that road with you for a second. Cause you do it. You, I mean, you do a wicked job of it. It reminds me very much of like my stuff where it's just like, you know, it's, it's energetic. It's kind of, I don't want to call it in your face in a bad way. It's like, it's, it's a good thing. You know what I mean? It's you can, you capture the attention and you hold it. And that's important. I appreciate that. No, no buddy. Like, dude, come on. <laughs> we see a lot of people that do that. And I'm not saying everybody's going to feel the way I do it. They, they, yeah. Some people might hate it and go, Oh shit, that guy again. But hundred percent. There's got to be an aspect of that that says, I'm going to grab your attention. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to give you some value before you walk away, right? Mm -hmm. um, so looking at that then, even like looking at what you do with video, because you do a ton of it. I know we just went through like, obviously you schedule to do that stuff. So when you're going to rip like a, a Prime Daily, you're, you're, it's, it's scheduled. Yeah. Right? Content you've got to come up with, you know, are you, um, are you scripting the thing or are you just giving yourself a few bullet points? How are you coming up with what you want to say? Or is this totally like, you know, you're in the middle of lifting a weight and you're like, Oh my God, I want to say this, open up. The go. 100%. So this is it, right? So when it started, it was like notes on my iPhone. Yeah. A bulleted list. Yeah. Every time I saw something in the day, I go in my inbox and I'm in my mind suite. REM sends me a, an article and they're talking about CMHC's new 10%, you know, uh, down payment plan that they're trying to do. That was my last two episodes. Okay. I literally yeah. just save that link there. I see. Sure even saw it. And I forget about it. Right. So, like, hold on. What do you do with it? So I, I literally, I'll say I'm in my inbox, REM kicked out the article about CMHC. I'll click on the link. I'll look at it. If I think it's something that's pertinent, I'm maybe five seconds into the process now. I click the link at the top, copy, paste, move on. Paste where? Paste in my notes. So I okay. have a notes app on my iPhone. Okay. Yeah. I'll physically show it to you. And so this I, is, this is as you, and this is where you're putting anything that's like relevant that you might want to rip a video about. You just put it in there. Yeah. Anything. So you'll just scroll through that sending, list and kind of go, what do I want to talk about today? This is a combination of me pulling articles, audience member questions, anything like I'll literally be, I have hundreds of them here. So yeah. I'm never going to ever, ever, ever not have content Yeah. because if I'm with Jamie and I talked to him this morning and he is crushing commercial deals that we're working on and like adding so much value, I'll be like, Hey Siri, add reminder to text Jamie and talk about some case studies in one hour. That's an actual tactile tool I use all the time. Cause now say I'm out on the run, right? And I thought about that. Sorry, Siri's actually trying to do it. Yeah. No, say I do that. That took me five seconds. In an hour, it's going to pop up on my reminders. All I have to do is click copy yeah. and paste. And now it's there. So say, you know, four or five o'clock rolls around and I'm like, ah, I got to shoot prime daily before I get out of the office. I go into the media room. I grab the, I literally take my camera. I press the record button. And I'm like, man, we were just working on this deal that you know, nobody else would have been able to push through. Jamie got creative with this, 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 you know, save the guy $100,000 on his lease. You, I bet you didn't even know that tenant representation was a thing. If you're thinking of opening a new office, let us know. I don't try and ask too much when I'm posting that stuff, but that's just a case study. CMHC was the same thing. I was literally about to leave the office. I didn't want to do it, right? I literally was like, I want to hop in my car, have a coffee, call my wife, maybe listen to a podcast. Look at the time. I'm like, got to do it. Walk into the media room, hit the record button. That one took me about three takes. Usually I get it in the first, but yep. I talked about it and I'm like, ah, I want to give a little bit more value. Cause if you don't know the industry, you won't understand what I said. Simplified it, simplified it again. And then I was like, you know what? This is two episodes. I'll cover the general overview. I'll get into some details on episode two. So I actually recorded two or no, I recorded the one and then I recorded the second one the next day, but the actual time invested was nothing. Right. Because so 
what are you using to record that? You, I mean, is it, is it the phone or is it a... So it was for a really long time. And that's yeah. the one message I'll give to your audience is just do it, right? Yeah, you, totally, right? Do it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about quality. Nobody cares about your you know, verbal flubs. It humanizes you. That's how you translate to people. And you got to start somewhere. If you go to my episode one, you're going to see I'm very different than my yep. episode 457. Right? dude. Just, and, and you get into the habits, you know, the Instagram stories, all that stuff. Like the more you do it, the better you get. And the more you find out who you are, who you think you're going to be, might not be the person you end up being. And <laughs> talking about goals, I meant to say that earlier, the goal that I thought I wanted to do, I'm on a completely different track now, but I see something in the industry that I don't think anybody else sees. So that's what I'm going to go after. So it used to be this. Now um, we invested in some good camera equipment because we have a videographer that works with us now. It, so cool. we, have, we have a nice camera that the quality shot through the roof. I've gotten some really good quality or feedback on that. So my, my cameraman that does all my property videos told me, he said, what's important first is audio. So get a good microphone. He's like, you yeah. can be pitch black. It doesn't matter if they can hear you. You got quality and that's where the puck's going. Second is going to be lighting. So if, if you've got the audio pegged and you have your iPhone, grab a little light and just be aware of your lighting. Super important. Third is your actual quality of your device. So we've invested in a very nice DSLR and yeah. I'll literally take that SD card. I'll airdrop it onto my phone. All of my editing's on my phone. So I actually, likewise. Yeah. Ideal. Right. Cause and you're, you're, you're on an iPhone. So you're using like the, the, uh, Apple, whatever. No, I use video Rama. So oh, do you? Okay. Cool. That I like personally, I bought the paid version. Um, I don't, I'm giving that secret out there. Nobody copied the, the style that I use, but because yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, for iPhone, it was really good because you could do some things with it, you know, layovers of text and then the exporting was really slick. And then what I, what I did from there was I would basically do initially, I would just do prime daily episode, this title. Now I do long form copy cause that the algorithm picks up really well. So I give some context. It gives me a description for our podcast cause we repurpose that for our podcast now for our Alexa flash briefing too. So the description goes in there, it SEOs and everything else. Yeah. Then I tag it. But essentially I basically save the post on my phone and I, I used to have a note. Now I use an app called preview to basically okay. set it up, but now it's set up by 5 PM. So I always post the prime daily at 10 PM every night. Cause you need to be consistent. And I copy and paste that there. The next morning it's actually time blocked that I'm going to repost it on LinkedIn at 9 AM. Cause God. I'm not hitting all my audiences on all the platforms at the same time. It's, Instagram at 10 p.m. It'll be Facebook maybe at like 3 p.m. the next day, scheduled post, and then LinkedIn. It's me literally picking up my phone and hitting the button and reposting last night's video on LinkedIn because that's a great platform now too, right? So you're posting to Facebook, you're posting to Insta, you're posting to LinkedIn, you're doing YouTube as well? Uh, we do do YouTube, but we've actually staggered it. So there's like a hundred episode gap in YouTube. Got so it. we're using our back episodes because there's some gold in there too. That like, yeah, for sure, man. Gives you a different perspective in today's market, right? And then you say you're not sharing it out to all the audiences at one time. You're actually spreading that out. What's your reasoning behind that? I don't want to annoy people. Honestly. Okay, cool. Like, Fair you see the same video from me on four different platforms within one hour, you're going to unfollow me pretty quick, right? And I also think, you know, just to hold myself accountable to posting on those other platforms, if I don't do it, long tail, I don't know which one's going to win, right? Instagram yeah. might not be there forever. Facebook might not be there forever. You know, LinkedIn might end up being the dominant player. Yeah. I really like, I like getting my hands dirty and seeing. So I, I've got some different things that I'm not going to give away on this podcast. Some yeah. Yeah. The secrets that both of us are talking about before, but hundred percent. this is, this is the stuff that's tangible. And like, you know, if I gave you my, my top, 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 you know, things that I do that really drive, you got to do the first things. To you have to build the foundation, support. right? And that's the thing. I mean, even, even when you go after a social audience, like, you know, that's the thing that everybody's got to really understand is you've got to go after your foundation first. Like, and when I say go after, I don't, I don't want to say that like you've got a bullseye on people's heads, right? It's not about that. This is just literally like use the people that again, know you, like you trust you. You've got your foundation, just like building a house. You want to put a roof on top. You got to have that first floor. You got to have that second floor. You got to have your walls up, but you've got to have a foundation to hold the whole thing together. Right. And that is your organic reach. The minute you start to really take it on, you're consistent about your content, your, your outputs, and you've really got sort of, and I don't think just like you just said, like, 
what episode one was. I remember my first video I shot, dude. Um, and I've, I've called it the pizza video, right? It was one of the first, at least, where I was walking out of my car, had one of these in for the microphone, using my phone and walking into a grocery store. You can hear the carts. You can hear the background music. You could see I went dark. I went light. There was all sorts of stuff going on. And like now I'm a lot, I'm very cognizant about my lighting and my sound and everything else. And your banner at the back looks slick. Dude, right? yeah. Like, you know what? It's what funny. They made that. They had that down at a show. Uh, um, awesome. We were doing something in KC down down in the states, and uh, they brought it back. I'm like, oh, that looks badass. Yeah. I put it up outside my door, and I'm like, wait a second. And so I put it inside. I thought I kind of like that. Yeah, I'll keep that up. You know. You know what? I'll give you a little behind the scenes because I've been sitting down at a desk the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Just for your audience. Oh, it's not up. I've got one that we use for our investors conference, and we have it posted up in the office normally. So it's the same thing, right? Like, yeah, it's, man. It's you know over time, right? You build it. It's about the brand. It's like, and, and again, this comes back to the whole mindshare build, right? So, I mean, when we take what we've sort of learned today about, you know, what Justin's taught us and, and, and dude, like this has been awesome um, time management, right? Uh, it's, it's very much we're on the same page here. And like, everybody's got to understand, it's not like we rehearsed any of this, what we were saying to each other today. But when we look at what's going on out there in the world, and I see, you know, again, what you're up to, what Justin's up to, I know, I know what I do. I know where I struggle. I know where I put in my time. I know where I get frustrated. I know where my wins are. I know where that stuff is. And you start to look at it all. And there's a lot of similarities amongst most of us. And it's, it yeah. comes down to time management. So, you know, what you were saying about it is very much on par for the way I work it. Um, about the line items, about the scheduling, about wow. being dedicated to that. And that was awesome. Um, the video stuff, I mean, again, coming up with content, like people overcomplicate. And I think everybody's really got to take it down a level and go, you know what, I want to do this. And I'm just going to press the button because it's that exact same thing. Like you've got your phone right here. Just open it up, hit record, put it out there. You want to go live on Facebook. You want to go live on Instagram. Hell, do stories. They're 15 seconds long. Like, it's so easy. Right, dude. It's That's so what I was pulling up, right? Like, people make excuses while we were talking. I shot a piece of video. That's a piece of content for me to post. You just got to be aware to do it while you're doing it, right? And I, and I was doing the same thing. And it's like, you're just shooting them. And it's raw and it's real. And people get to see who you are. You know what I mean? And I mean, I, dude, I've done video where it's like, I, I haven't. I realized as I was in my video, I didn't turn on my microphone. So people could, you know, people just, yeah, dude. and then you see it after you're like, oh, well, you know what? Shit happens. I ripped so much video, so much audio. What are you going to do? Keep nobody, it. nobody cares. And nobody cares. And people actually go like, you know what? That was cool. That was raw. And it actually gives people the comfort to say, oh, you're allowed to make mistakes while you're live. Yeah. This is, yeah. The, this is the world we're in today. Right. Um, so, buddy, I, I, I know you and I could, could yap and yap and yap, and I got so much I want to get into, but I'm going to leave that for next time we do this. 100%. Um, before we go, because you've, you've, you've really given some, some good nuggets there, uh, especially on mindshare building. I mean, like, again, guys, I think this one very heavily was, was very content focused, you know, video focused, uh, time management focused on how to come up with content or when you can block time to do that. But um, I mentioned that book, and you said that you read that book when you were on vacation. Give me yeah. like top three book recommendations that we could share out to people. Uh, because I said I'm a man of faith. The first one I'll tell you is the Bible. Cause I think there's a lot of principles in there. Okay, cool, uh, fair enough. Daily, daily lives. Um, I'm thinking right off, right off the bat. I mean, the thank you economy because Gary Vee's now a super popular public figure. I found him in 2009. He had actually shot a video. I think it was a Remax conference. Maybe it was 2011 um, before he was famous at all. And that was one of his original books. And the thank you economy is where we're at now. So you see in the background, that video is Ed Milet. Yeah. Ed Milet and Andy Frizzalia, they do a lot of stuff together. And Andy was talking today about how we've gone away from the time where a big business is literally just spending money on marketing to make you smell the right thing to make you buy something. We're back to a village economy, or Gary likes to call it a thank you economy, where you know the guy that's making your coffee. You know the guy that is your shoe cobbler again. That never happened for the last 20 years. But the community building, the videos, the podcasting, this type of stuff, like, you know, I've got relationships all across the U.S. now. I was working with some guys when I was on vacation to develop relationships because of the industry syndicate where be conscious of that. And the thank you economy will explain that to you in more detail than I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Own the day was the one that we spoke about. And I'm trying to think of another one right off the top of my head. I've got some books post it up over here but i'm really I know, it's like you read so much and you're going like oh my god i'm on the spot here for a second because there's okay. so many good nuggets okay uh, the four disciplines of execution i just listened to it as an audiobook phenomenal and really breaks down goal setting 
right? So we use it as a team and we use, you'll hear the term whirlwind, you'll hear the term wig, but setting a wildly important goal and then being able to set action items that you check in with. Phenomenal book. And I definitely recommend that one too. Dude, absolutely huge, man. This is, uh, this has been a very, very awesome, very cool, very interesting episode. I thank you sincerely for the time. My mind, every time you're speaking, my mind is whirling around with like so many different things. I just had something else I wanted to ask you about. Um, and it totally wiped off my mind just because like that's where my mind is going right now. This has been really, really wicked. Uh, one thing I'm going to leave uh, behind here just before we wrap to the entire audience is that Justin has just shared a ton of wicked knowledge with you guys. He's giving you some great ideas around, again, time management, content creation, um, execution on that content. Here's the beauty. Here is the absolute beauty of all of this. Most of you listening are not going to do jack shit. So <laughs> somebody here, take it, run with it, own it, and you're going to win. Okay. Yeah. And that's just, that's the unfortunate reality. And I hope you can all prove me wrong. I'd love to see a hundred percent of people pick up what they've learned and go and execute. I think everybody's going to win when they do it. But the reality is most people don't. So for the people that will consistency is king. Message me, tell me what you're going to do and I'll hold you accountable. Use the people around you and totally, right? just tell the world you're going to do it. I said two years ago or whatever, 457 episodes ago, I'm going to do a daily video. I said it. I'm like, oh, how am I going to actually do that? But by saying it, it made me accountable, right? My man, Hawk. Hawk is a beast. So check out the um, IV Mindset. Or I think it's, yeah, IV Mindset podcast. He launched it with my buddy, Dan. Probably one of the best fitness guys I've ever met. One of, definitely one of the best jujitsu players I've ever met too. And he's going through that same thing, right? Where you say something, put it out to you know your universe or your your sphere and it holds you accountable and if he's not doing what he told me he's going to do next time i see him guess who i'm going to chirp he's a beast so i know he's going to do it but sometimes working with your community that to hold each other accountable is super important buddy i tell everybody with the mindshare challenge like that eight-week training program i do i've got a private members group and we go live every single day and i tell everybody i'm saying it publicly right now on my podcast and i'll tell you uh -huh. something when I get up in the morning and I know I prepared my content the night before, but I get up in the morning and go, oh, I'm a little bit tired or maybe I'm not really feeling it. I cannot stop. I've yeah. told you I'm going to do it. I better pull it off. 100%, man. I know you got to go. I got to run as Buddy, well. Tell me. Um, thank you. Appreciate the time. Where can people find you? Um, at Prime Real Estate Can on Instagram is probably primarily the, the best platform and YouTube. So if you YouTube Prime Real Estate Brokerage or my name, just well, not my name because other things will pop up <laughs> um, or go on Facebook. I'm sure, you know, we're on all platforms so you can find us if you're looking. Wicked. Not hard to find. Um, dude, thank you very, very much. I appreciate the time today. Uh, everybody, you are either watching us live. You're either watching the recording or listening to this on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or even Spotify. Maybe you went to the industry syndicate.com. Maybe you went to mindshare101.com. Wherever you like to consume your content, please rate, review, and subscribe. And if you haven't yet, connect with me on Facebook at Mindshow 101 and on Instagram at David Greenspan 101. This has been another episode of the Mindshare Podcast. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening.